Hi, I'm Daniel Fisher. Welcome back to Synth Clips. Uh, in this clip, we are going to talk about backing up your synthesizer. And I know it's not as sexy as going in and talking about programming other things, but it's crucial. Why? Because I need you to be fearless about programming. I need you to never worry, oh, I'm going to erase this magic uh, preset that's already there. Um, honestly, I would love it if you got rid of that kind of thinking altogether. Once you start programming your own patches, you will find that nobody else's patches are ever as good as the ones you made for yourself. Uh, that's kind of the whole point of this series of clips is to teach you to do that. But I get it initially, you're kind of scared, oh, those precious presets, I don't want to hurt them. And I need you to have lots of real estate, um, lots of patch uh, locations that you can save to without worrying. So how do we get rid of that worry? One is you just need to learn to back up what you've done. And that's important for giving you that secure feeling. But two, you're going to start making patches you really like, and you need to back those up and get back to them at any time. For whatever synth you have, you're going to have to learn how to either save to some uh, removable media, so some synthesizers will save to a thumb drive. Other synthesizers dump uh, what is called a system exclusive dump or a sysx dump, uh, and that you can just USB to any computer, and there's various free software that records system exclusive, or your DAW can record it as well. It's just MIDI, it's just that it's a system exclusive message instead of uh, notes or anything else like that. And then I'm going to show you how to make sure that the dump you just saved um, is actually saved. And I'll show you a real foolproof way to test that by loading it back. And once you have that secure feeling, then all of a sudden you can bravely start editing and erasing other patches and everything else like that. Uh, and the third kind of way of saving, so I've mentioned you could do uh, saving to a removable media like a thumb drive. Other synths do sysx dumps like this uh, Moog Subsequent 37. Uh, but there are also some synthesizers that use a dedicated editor or editor librarian to save patches. And in that case, again, you'll want to be USB to your computer and have that loaded up. Uh, but right now, I'm going to do a system exclusive dump using the subsequent 37. So on this synth, the Moog subsequent 37, uh, it does global dumps of the entire uh, internal contents of its memory via sysx. And so I have a software here called SysX Librarian. Uh, it's a free app for Mac. There are other things for PC, like MIDI Aux and other things. And like I said, it'll store to your DAW. Um, it's just MIDI. All you need to do is record it, name it, save it, play it back. So I'm using the Sub 37 as my example of how to dump something via SysX. That's how they do it. And it's going to be USB to my laptop here. And I have free software called SysX Librarian but it'll work with uh, on PC MIDI aux or other uh, various free software. So I have that on here, I have USB connected, and if I go to choose a source, I can see Moog Sub 37. And so now this is talking to the librarian. And then on the Moog, uh, I just hit the MIDI button and I cursor down until I get to the word sysx which is short for system exclusive. I hit the cursor. Now I'm in the MIDI SysX page. And I wanna go down, there's, there's, there's several ways of sending. There's buffer send. That just sends the current patch that you're editing with. Um, not even what you say, but how you've currently edited it. Um, there's, I can send just sequences. I can send the current preset, or in other words, the one I had saved. Um, or I can do all presets. And I'm gonna do all presets. So I'm cursoring down to all presets and then I curse it to the word send. And now when I hit either the up or down arrow, it's gonna start transmitting. But first I have to put the librarian into record. And because I'm sending multiple patches, I'm gonna hit record many. And it tells me that it's waiting for sysx. And then I hit uh, the up or down button and it's sending. I could tell that one because I can see the MIDI light blinking here. And two, I can see on the computer that it's saying receiving sysx. Okay, we're back. We took a minute or two off to let it save, but I know it's done. One, because the MIDI light has stopped blinking here. Two, because I can see that no more messages are going to uh, my SysX librarian. It's telling me it's waiting for more messages, but I'm done. So I say done, and now we gotta name it. And naming is crucial. So in the case of computer, you're not stuck with eight characters, but uh, 
we're gonna talk about what happens if you are. In this case, I'm gonna use SSQ37 for subsequent 37. And because this is the factory patches, I'm just gonna say factory. And so I don't need any additional information other than that. And, and then save it. All right, so now I have it saved, but I want a warm and fuzzy feeling that I know I have it saved. And even though this is the factory data that often can be gotten back uh, by doing a factory reset, some synthesizers don't have a factory reset. So it is important to save your own factory sounds, just to feel nice and safe. So what you do to prove that you got it is you go to the very first patch of the very first bank, you edit that, and you change the first letter of the title of the patch, one letter. So right now it's analog delay, and now it's going to be the analog delay. And I hit save to accept, and I want to save it back to the same location. I hold save, and boom. But then what you do is you go to the very last patch of the very last bank. So I'm going to bank 16, patch 16, and it's called init preset, which is fine. Uh, so I hit save, and instead of init, it's gonna be called Jinit, always just one letter. So now what I'm gonna do is play the saved sysx file back into the Moog, and I'll know that all of the patches are safe if the very first patch goes back to its correct name and the very last patch goes back to its correct name. I know I saved all the data. It, it's a very nice, warm, comfy feeling. So all I do is press play on this and I can see that I'm getting MIDI. Okay, so now it's done. Uh, the librarian has stopped showing that it's sending data. The MIDI light on the Moog has stopped blinking, and I'm going to go to bank one, preset one, and the patch is back to analog delay. I'm gonna look at bank 16, patch 16, and it's back to init preset. So I know that I have that and I am now safe. Okay, so now I have a Roland Juno DS and I'm using that one for this demonstration because it can save its data to a thumb drive. So I have a little tiny USB thumb drive uh, with 16 gig of space on it. And that goes into the thumb drive slot back here. All right, now that the thumb drive is in, I'm going to go to the utility mode where you can back up data. So I do menu, utility, I hit enter, I go to backup, I'm already there, I hit enter, and now um, I can name this file. And here is what I've discovered over years of saving files. This is the best way to do files. Let's assume that you only have eight characters. You might have more, but right now let's limit it to eight because then you know you're covered on any type of synth. And so what I usually do is I use two letters of the alphabet to describe either the synth or the particular project that I'm using on that synth. So if I'm just only using the DS in one particular mode, I might make the first two letters DS. Um, but if I was using it for, uh, if I had a rock band and a jazz band separately, I might do RK and JZ as my two letters. Um, as long as you just have two letters for each of the situations, and then you have six slots left in the, in the name, at least six. And what I do is I do the first two is the last two digits of the year, then the two digits of the month and the two digits of the date. And I always do it precisely in that order. And here's why. You might think, yeah, but when I save a file on my computer, I always can look at the modified date and put them in order. Except, have you ever noticed that sometimes your computer just all of a sudden makes all the files in a certain folder today's date? If you haven't used date in the naming, you are now stuck. You have no way of knowing which are the newer and better patches or the older and less better patches. So trust me on this, two letters. So I'm gonna call this D, S, and today is the year is 2020. So I'm going to do two O, and then the month is right now is January. So I'm gonna do O one. Uh, today's date is the 15th, so I'm going to do 1-5. And if you're going to do entire bank savings over the same day, 
and you have more space, which this does, then you use one more letter of the alphabet, which means that you can have 25 files saved throughout the entire day. And man, if you run out of those, just go to the next date and start with A. You'll know it's, you know, within the same day. Um, but that way, now you're only using nine characters, but you've specified up to 26 files for that one day. I'm not gonna do that, I'm gonna just do it as is. And so I say enter, and then it says, are you sure? And I say okay, and it does it, and it's a fairly quick process. Uh, it goes longer if you have your own user samples. Uh, at the moment, I do not, so it's flying along, and bang. And so, when it comes time to load it again, if, uh, if there was a reason, either I messed something up, or um, I took my thumb drive to a location where there's a different DS, and I wanted to make that Juno DS mine for the day, uh, which is why you'll be glad you saved factory because then it's very easy to load factory back over and put it back into a new condition. Okay, so now that I have that saved to thumb drive, uh, I'm going to go ahead and restore the patches in here. If I had renamed the first patch and renamed the last patch, I would have further proof that it works, but I, I know that it works. But I'm gonna do it for you anyway, so I go to menu, I go to utility, instead of backup this time I go to restore, and there is the patch right at the top. And if you've named these data files, two letters, then the year, then the month, and the date, then they will all be in perfect order every time. And on a Roland Juno DS, after you've done a full load, um, it asks you to power cycle the machine, so it's saying shut down. So I do that, and when it comes up, it will be back in the restored version. Now, since that was only factory data, you could have also done a factory reset. So just know for every synth that you own, you should know how to back up and restore anything that you've saved, and you should know how to go to factory reset if you ever need to do that. It's just easy to do, and every owner's manual will happily show you how to do it. Okay, so now I have the Hydrosynth by ASM, Ashen Sound Machines. And the way they save data is with an external uh, editor librarian. And so I have that called up and I don't even have to do anything from the screen. Uh, all of that's done from here. And what you do is I've got uh, one of the banks showing right here and I'm going to make what's called a new bank and I'm gonna name it. And again, we're going to do the same uh, naming convention that, that I showed you. So in this case, we'll do HS200115 and, and just kind of as a proof, um, I'm gonna use the small letter A to say that is the first of a bunch that I'm gonna do today. And uh, then I save it. So now that I have that new bank saved, if I wanted to move individual patches somewhere, or if I wanted to transfer the whole thing back to a different bank, I basically would go on the left side, I'm gonna say Hydrosynth Bank D, and it's showing me that it's empty. And then I'm just going to drag whatever patches I want from here into the locations I want there. And now you can see that I have the two patches I drag back into bank D. And so it's very easy to move things around, save entire banks, create new banks, copy banks, anything you wanna do. And those are basically the three ways that we're gonna transfer bulk files of all the patches from here to either thumb drive, to either a system exclusive recorder, or to a dedicated editor librarian just for that synth. So that's the end of the data saving portion of our synth clips. Um, if you wanna see all of these playlists in order, uh, there's a link in the info section here. And as always, if you have any questions, please contact your Sweetwater sales engineer. My name is Daniel Fisher. Thank you very much for watching.